So it's looking like it's Dogecoin part two. Dogecoin is up over 340% since we last made a video talking about it breaking out over 10 cents and heading towards a dollar per coin. I was literally getting death threats from people telling me I was full of BS and that I didn't know what I was talking about when I was talking about it breaking above 10 cents towards a dollar. But fate loves irony and we actually just saw Dogecoin hit 29 cents. And we've been getting so many questions on sort of how to handle Dogecoin in our free cryptocurrency Discord, which I will link below as well. So I figured that I would address it. So in this video, I'll use my four years experience as an equities day trader and my six years experience as a stock and crypto investor to sort of talk about some of the fundamental stuff that's going on with Dogecoin, what I would recommend to do with it if you aren't in Dogecoin yet, some very important short term price levels that I would make sure to pay attention to and where I see Dogecoin going in the next few years and then overall into the long term future. I want everyone to sort of be able to conceptualize and understand risk here and have a game plan to be able to profit strategically off of Dogecoin. And if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit the like button on this video. YouTube likes to control the cryptocurrency content that comes out. So in order to drive this up, make sure you're liking this video. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, I make content all about day trading, cryptocurrency investing and personal finance. So if those are some things that interest you, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn all bell notifications on. That way, if I talk about anything that's time sensitive, like the Cardano trade, like Dogecoin, you'll be notified right away. But without further ado, let's get into what's going on with Dogecoin and how I would recommend to handle this situation. So the first thing that I sort of want to address is the fact that people who really know cryptocurrency really well are so quick to sort of poo poo Dogecoin and say, oh, it has no use case. It has nothing fundamentally driving the price up. And they think that they're sort of too smart to be able to acknowledge the fact that Dogecoin could potentially have some sort of short term, even long term success in the crypto space. Okay, it doesn't seem feasible to them because it seems like such a joke that it would sort of undermine their authority understanding how cryptocurrencies work and understanding legitimate cryptocurrency. Now there's definitely something to be said about understanding cryptocurrency on that sort of a level but as a trader what I recommend to reinforce in your brain is that any sort of financial market is a representation of mass human psychology and markets are always going to act irrationally. That's how markets work so we have to understand that just because the valuation in the use case doesn't necessarily meet the potential valuation, we have to understand that there's outside catalysts that can control the price that we can sort of be open to to understand how we can strategically profit off of that. We can see Dogecoin act semi irrationally because everyone sort of believes in it and it ends up becoming a self fulfilling prophecy. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So to sort of break down what Dogecoin is, it was created by Billy Marcus and Jackson Palmer. Okay, the co founder of Dogecoin, Billy Marcus was actually a software engineer for IBM. They basically wanted to create a fun way for people to transact free from centralized banks. So Dogecoin doesn't do anything really special, but the fact that it's sort of based after a meme has brought it into popularity even starting in 2013. So right now they're actually working with GitHub to try to revive some of their development and make minor tweaks to actually optimize how Dogecoin works and try to improve it and actually make it semi legitimate now that they're catching on more traction than they probably expected it to see. So you can see right here they're trying to improve synchronization speed. So improve the speed at which nodes can upload blocks to the Dogecoin blockchain, which is in turn going to speed up transactions and make the blockchain more efficient to transact on. Okay, very simple updates that they're doing. They actually only have run one update since 2019. So as far as them progressing their cryptocurrency, we haven't seen a lot of development yet, but we don't know moving into the future how much development we're actually going to see from Dogecoin. So if who knows what they're going to create. And that being said, we don't know what sort of potential Dogecoin could have. Dogecoin has also been very smart with their media exposure. So sort of playing into that lighthearted feeling of Dogecoin, they're trying to get their exposure through memes and through internet presence, which has basically catalyzed this major move on top of some price action that we're going to get into in just a second. And you can see right here, Dogecoin has actually creeped up to eighth place in overall market capitalization. And market capitalization is one of the leading indicators to show how important and successful a cryptocurrency or really any financial instrument is and the fact that they're in eighth place sitting right underneath Polkadot and Cardano says to me that there's a lot of market participation based on the media exposure and sort of hype overall. Once again, we're seeing markets act irrationally, but that doesn't mean that there's not great opportunity to make money. I want to roughly run through the actual numbers of what we would have to see in order for Dogecoin to hit $1. So if you look right here, we have about 
129 billion Dogecoin in circulation right now. One of the biggest issues that I see with Dogecoin is there's not a finite supply of Dogecoin. They actually adjust the amount of coins that they have based on inflation, which right now they're actually inflating at about 3.85%, which means by 2025, they're actually going to have 150 Dogecoin in circulation based on their current models. If we are to be talking about Dogecoin going to a dollar within 2021, the way we would calculate that number is by taking the total circulating supply multiplied by the projected price, which would be a dollar multiplied by 129 total circulating supply on Doge, which would make their market capitalization 129 billion. And you can see right here, that would put them slightly higher than the Binance coin and basically half the market capitalization of the entire Ethereum network. So yes, it is a long shot. However, I don't think that anyone can sort of quantify how much capital is going to move into the cryptocurrency market overall. You can see right here, the total market capitalization is now 2.2 trillion. I remember earlier in this year, we were looking at just over $1 trillion. I remember it was like a big news story when we hit $1 trillion in overall market cap. So it's almost doubled. So to say that Ethereum's total market capitalization won't double within another year in the same deal with Bitcoin, you know, if Dogecoin's market cap is to double in the next year, we could easily see the price of Dogecoin double from the price we've seen right here, which would put it right around 50 cents. And that's sort of on the conservative side. But now that we've sort of broken down some of the fundamentals about Dogecoin, I want to go over to the chart and talk about what we were expecting in Dogecoin and why we actually had faith in this and some important levels to be watching for if you're currently in Dogecoin looking for some sort of quantified profit target. If you're not in Dogecoin currently, where you can look to get in maybe on a dip buy and what important levels we could expect to see within 2021. Okay, so you can see right here, I have a one hour chart of Dogecoin. Basically, I'm just gonna walk you through some technical analysis of what I've looked at and sort of why we saw the breakout we saw, what levels we're looking for the price to go up to and sort of a potential scenario for you to dip by Dogecoin before it heads to $1. So first things first, we've established this overall uptrend right here. We see these lows moving up right here. This is the low of the temporary short-term uptrend that we've seen. Okay, we also have a lower long-term trend line along these lows right here, but based on the amount of volume and participation that we're seeing that is brand new in cryptocurrency, I don't think that we're gonna have a reversion down to that mean probably ever again if we are to see Dogecoin succeed. So right here is sort of where we started to see an increase in Dogecoin participation, which in turn drove the price up to this first resistance level up here. Then we saw the price turn around right here and consolidate with a higher low. And then we saw the price hit off of this neckline resistance level right here. We had a nice consolidation and then we had a massive breakout above this high. And that's basically trading 101. It's all supply and demand imbalances. And you can visually see those with trends on charts. And if these concepts are interesting to you, I put together an entire free training of how me and my premium discord members take intraday or shorter term cryptocurrency trades to generate income rather than just only investing in cryptocurrencies. So you can see right here from this initial point where we started to see an increase in volume, we're up basically 340% off of this high. Okay, so the next thing that I did was I drew what's called a Fibonacci projection indicator off of this, which is basically taking the study of naturally occurring ratios and putting them into a projection using Fibonacci ratios to figure out important levels where we should expect to see the price action moving forward. And you can see right here, we have reaction points off of these levels here from going from swing low to this high to this low. We can now see projection levels where we should anticipate the price action reacting with. And you can see right here, we had a nice reaction point off of these two levels here. And now we're starting to catch some temporary support off of this 161.8 level, which is actually the golden ratio level for Fibonacci and Fibonacci projections. But because I'm expecting Dogecoin Coin to hit a lot higher levels than just this initial breakout level, I took it a step further and used a Fibonacci retracement tool to sort of project an area where we could potentially, number one, dip by Dogecoin, and number two, use as a theoretical level to see where the levels sitting right around $1 would be to plan a potential exit if you're long Dogecoin, or just to sort of map out a potential roadmap moving into 2021 of where we can expect to see the price. So you can see right here, we have our 61.8 level, which is the golden ratio 
ratio in Fibonacci sort of intersecting with the line right here. So if we are to see a price change and have sort of a sharp reversion down to this overall trend, this would be a very healthy level to dip by Dogecoin sitting right around 15 cents. Just keep in mind, if you don't want to use a stop loss on this, which is basically in order that automatically sells your position if you're wrong about the trade, you have to do what's called risking off of liquidation and only investing money that you're completely willing to lose. Otherwise, considering that this is our major dip level where I start to see some resistance and support sitting underneath these levels, if you want to try to dip by Dogecoin as a potential trade idea, you could look to enter right around this level, risk underneath this consolidation range right here, and have a profit target sitting just under $1. And I'll actually get to why we wanna put it under $1. That would put you at a 1 to 12 risk reward ratio. This would sort of allow you to add more size to your Dogecoin without risking the entire amount that you're trying to invest because basically if it came down to this lower level right here, you would exit the trade sitting at around nine cents, saying you would the loss, but you always want to be quantifying risk when you're getting into trades because if you're investing money that you can't afford to lose, you're going to act irrationally and you want to be thinking clearly and objectively when you trade, always quantifying risk and always having a trading plan before you enter trades. So I would recommend risking under 10 cents on a temporary trade right here. But if you're risking off of liquidation, just bring this right down to basically zero and you can still sort of quantify your risk by only investing money that you're willing to completely lose. Okay, so assume Assuming that we get a pull down to this Fibonacci and this reversion to the overall trend, I drew a new Fibonacci projection off of this low to swing high here to our projected low, which puts our 261.8 level right at 80 cents and sort of our 3.618 and our 4.236 levels sitting actually over dollar right in this dollar range. So if we see another major, a little bit correction and then another major move, this could easily move very close to $1 per coin. Like I said, the market capitalization would be pretty significant. But being that we're expecting to see a lot more money in the crypto market in general, I don't think it's out of the question. And I've been saying that basically at five cents. So to summarize, if you're not in Dogecoin at all, depending on the size of your portfolio, if you're working with a very small amount of money and you're just looking for a Hail Mary play, put some money into Dogecoin that you don't mind risking completely and just hold on to it long term because you never know what things like this are going to do. If you currently hold Dogecoin as a trade and you're looking for temporary exits on Dogecoin, I think selling half basically right here at about 30 to 32 cents would be a wise decision. And then selling the rest basically at 75 to 85 cents before it hits one dollar and then probably has a major correction off of that psychological level if you haven't bought in at all yet your first option would be to wait for a reversion down to this overall trend right here which may or may not ever happen but if we are to see a pretty sharp move i would expect based on price action in elliott wave theory that we would get another extension on this trend to higher prices sitting at those projection levels that we talked about so anyways guys i hope that added some sort of clarity as to how to approach dogecoin and what's actually going on with Dogecoin. Always make sure you have a trading plan before you get into a trade and never invest money that you can't afford to lose. Seeing Dogecoin go to a dollar within the next one to two years is not out of the question by any means. And who knows what the future of Dogecoin and cryptocurrency in general will be, but there's certainly a lot of potential there. But anyways, guys, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. If anyone else wants to send me angry messages about me not knowing what I'm talking about, feel free to put those in the comments as well. And if you're still here with me, make sure you hit the like button on this video video. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn all bell notifications. As of lately, we've been calling out time sensitive altcoins, and it would be very important for you to be notified on these trades if you're looking to take them with the Inevit Trade community. Also, don't forget to join our free cryptocurrency discord room if you want to join our community and talk with like minded individuals that are interested in cryptocurrency. But I appreciate all your support. Until next time, I will see you all in the next video.